to talk to all of you and inspire you and encourage you to participate, to lean all the way in to doing something big and amazing in your life. I'm from an organization called XPRIZE. We're an innovation accelerator, and uh, you can read all about us if you Google us on the web. And today, I want to talk to you about the amazing times that we live in. A time of blended reality, where our virtual world, our biological world, and our physical world, they're all combining at an unprecedented pace. And of course, this revolution is fueled by people like you and I. It's ordinary people. We have the power to participate in these times. And that's what I'm here to talk about today and give you a few tips on how you, me, ordinary people can participate in these extraordinary times. And if you think about it, uh, just a few years ago, not even a hundred years ago, you had to be somebody. You had to be a governor of something. You had to be a very rich person. You had to have tremendous power to impact the lives of millions of people. But that's not the case today, right? We all have this power in our pockets, as you've heard, the supercomputers that we all carry around. We have the power of connectivity and of information in this new and exciting age. So at XPRIZE, we put up big incentive prizes to create breakthroughs for the benefit of humanity. Because we believe that there's only three things that incentivize people to innovate at this level. One is the chance to be the first, to actually invent something because there's no amount of search engine optimization you can pay for being the actual inventor. The second for entrepreneurs is the chance to be the first in a new industry and make a lot of money from that. And money, money is extremely important. But the third and the biggest of all in our teams, thousands of teams who participate from around the world in all of our prizes tell us this all the time. It's the chance to really make a difference in the world. As humans, we have altruistic souls. We're at our happiest and our best when we're influencing the lives of somebody else, improving that life, even if we don't know who that person is. So at XPRIZE, we shamelessly capitalize on these three things, and we put up these big incentive prizes and, and create some amazing breakthroughs. We're probably best known for our first prize, the Ansari XPRIZE, $10 million, that opened up the private suborbital space flight industry. And Alan here is a card-carrying member, <laughs> right, who has a ticket because the, 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 the winner was bought by, uh, by, and became Virgin Galactic, bought by Richard Branson. And Alan's got a ticket to go next year, so talk to him about it. And this is not my first time in Australia. I've had the distinct pleasure of working with Australian Aid, and together, last year in India, I started XPRIZE India, and last year in India, we launched the Water Abundance XPRIZE. So we're very thrilled about that relationship with Australia. So far, we've awarded over $35 million in prizes, and we have nine active prizes, from the IBM Watson AI Prize, to Women's Safety, to the Google Luna X Prize, uh, totaling over $60 million. And that all leads us to our transformative purpose, which is building a bridge to abundance for all of us. But I want to talk for a second now about hopes and dreams. I grew up in Mumbai, India, and like many of you, I dreamt really big and lived really small. I had uh, an amazing influencer in my life, which was science fiction, loved science fiction, and by now, I thought, you know, 20 to 30 years from now, we will be living in, these, in this amazing world, these beautiful futuristic cities. But yet, that's not the case. My hometown still looks like that. That's my Mumbai skyline. Yes, pixelated, but purposely pixelated because it's hazy due to all the pollution. 
And I thought we'd be living with such an amazing integration with nature. But instead, we're just doing our best to desecrate nature. And what about medical science? We'd be living much longer and we'd have these nanobots coursing through our veins, but not really. Big pandemics are still out there. Disease is still out there. And of course, we'd be living, dare I say it, in a much more egalitarian and inclusive world. That's what I really dreamt and thought, but climate change is real. And it's a big part of our life, and to me, that's going to be the biggest thing that influences the next 20 years. All of our thoughts, dreams, and actions. And warfare, even though we live in the most peaceful times, we have different kinds of warfare, and it's absolutely real. And yet, people tell us all the time, but you have the power to change this. The future is in your hands. How many people really believe that? Really? How many of you really believe that the future is in your hands and you have the power to change it? Very few people, very, very few people. <laughs> but I want to change that equation. I want you to be empowered with a few things that I've learned along the way in my journey. First of all, we need nothing short of a revolution, and we live in revolutionary times already. Human beings are good at revolution, especially with technology, right? The agrarian revolution, the two industrial revolutions that we had, the scientific revolution of the 19th century, the IT revolution of the early 2000s. But we are in the middle of a revolution that is much bigger and much more powerful than all of them. And the pace of business is changing. We're living truly in these accelerated times. So we have to harness the power of this revolution. And of course, this revolution is being caused by many reasons, and I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to go into all of them, but I'm just going to talk about one. With hyper-globalization and connectivity, don't think 20 years, think two years. By 2020, four billion people online with all of their hopes, their dreams, their ideas, their artistry, their creativity, sent across 50 trillion gigabytes of data with over 30 billion connected devices generating income in excess of four trillion dollars. This is truly a revolution, and you must understand this. You must understand it, and you must be able to harness it. And there are two ways to harness a revolution. One is to take a moonshot, do something big, audacious, never been done before, completely breakthrough. Difficult, very difficult. And the second, just as important, is a slingshot. Let me quickly talk about slingshot effect. Many of you might know this, but mathematics, physics, for space travel, very important. When your spacecraft is traveling by a body, like the moon or the Earth, you use the gravitational force to pull you forward. The gravitational force you need to harness is these global trends things that are happening in the world today to propel your ideas, your business, and your creativity forward to take a real moonshot. I'm going to give you five things that we have learned at XPRIZE. Some borrowed from Peter Diamandis, who was here on the stage a couple of years ago, and some learned from my own journey. Number one, and you heard Tanya talk about this earlier, we have to shift our thinking from local and linear to global and exponential. This is a picture of the Rift Valley where I worked in Ethiopia with one of my enterprises some years ago. That's the birthplace of humanity. That's where we all came from. And as we, we cruised out of the, the Rift Valley and we populated the world, that biology, that person, that person hasn't changed much till today. Now, Raymond, I don't know if Raymond's here, but he'll tell you that we've had a lot of minor little evolutionary events, but there has been no major evolutionary event in 50,000 years. Our brains are still 50,000 years old, but we're not living in those times anymore. So we need to harness the power of exponential thinking and global thinking. I'm not going to go too much into this because I know you all have heard this before, how you understand exponentiality 
30 steps, 30 linear steps will take me to the end of the stage. 30 exponential steps. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 meters will take me over 25 times around the surface of the Earth. But you can't live like that and think like that all the time. You'd go absolutely mad. So what are the couple of things you can do to help yourself think when you need to exponentially? Here it is. First of all, we live in an age of quantum entanglements. In physics, a quantum entanglement, very simply, is simply that an atom in one part of the universe, when mirrored in some other place, paired, entangled, when it behaves in a certain way, no matter what the distance is, the other atom, the paired atom, will behave exactly the same way. Isn't that the world we live in today, where events around the world will ripple through your life today? And it's not just because of the news, this is real. We are so interconnected. And the second thing we have to remember to think exponentially is we have to adopt a different mindset, because it all begins up here. We have to adopt the mindset of abundance. What does that mean? What it means is we have to look at our deepest problems, our deepest challenges as the most amazing opportunities. And I dare say that there's nobody here who embodies that more at this conference, who you will meet in the next couple of days, than Neil from the Cyborg Foundation truly, truly adopting a very different mindset and, and challenging, provoking all of us to think exponentially. The second thing we learn how to do at XPRIZE is to harness the power of exponential technologies. And I invite you all to become a geek, to learn about these exponentials, because it's not just about the technologies themselves, but it's about the beautiful convergence so what happens when robotics meets AI, and that meets advanced sensing and virtual reality? Well, we say it's our next X Prize. It's the Avatar X Prize that we're launching in the next couple of months. So harness the power of these technologies, become a geek, learn about them. They're incredibly exciting. Yes, they have a dark side. Don't be afraid of that. We have to confront all of it but you must harness that power. The third thing that we learn is be influenced by science fiction, because sometimes all the ideas cannot flow from within, and we have great influencers out there. Science fiction is one of them. Babblefish, you just talked about it. Because science fiction allows us to access that dream state, allows us to go beyond all kinds of physical and imaginary boundaries, both. And then the other great, great influencer, at least in my work and life, has been nature. Imagine this, we have over four billion years of prototyping all around us examples of how we can thrive in harmony, sometimes violent examples, absolutely. Violent examples for drastic change, evolution, improvement. We must start learning from nature instead of working at odds with nature. And lastly, my colleagues Patricia Bryan will tell you this too, you must put people in the middle of change. Because otherwise, your ideas, your technology, your artistry is just not going to be accepted, right? Because we're gonna present with all of our flaws as human beings, with all of our pettiness, with all of our issues, with all of our needs, with all of our capacity for compassion, love, intelligence, connectivity, real authenticity, authentic connections. We're going to present with all of that, good and bad. So you must design and involve people and the acceptance of people in that change. And that's when that harmony of working with man and machine will come into play. As Peter says, and I use this quote all the time because I'm a big fan of Peter, the day before something is a breakthrough, it's still a crazy idea. Think about that for a second. 
The day before something is a breakthrough, you have all the naysayers in the world telling you that that cannot be, that cannot happen. And then it happens, and there you are. It's a new world order. Things have changed, right? And there's only one thing to do at that point. Ignore the naysayers, keep bringing forth crazy ideas, pay it forward, and do it all over again. I just want to leave you with one last thought as you imagine what your moonshot and what your slingshot is. It's that we, we, we're the people we've been waiting for, guys. Nobody else is coming. You know that, right? <laughs> Nobody's coming. We are the people we've been waiting for. If it's not you, then who? And if it's not now, then when? So stand up. Take your moonshot, fail, do it again, succeed, pay it forward, but be bold, be brave. These are new times, and you need an internal revolution to really embrace them. Thank you very much. <laughs>